have already here, because those are some very, the tenderloin, as I think a lot of you know, was down zoned in the 80s to only eight stories. And this has been part of the reason why the Tenderloin has been able to be protected as a lower income neighborhood. Because you can't build a huge, very lucrative project in the Tenderloin because you can only build an eight story project. The height limits on Van Ness Street, although I don't know what they are, are much higher. You can build hundreds and hundreds of feet. So eight, you, you assume about 10 feet of floor. So eight stories is about 80 feet. And on Van Ness you can build, I don't know, 200 feet or more. So that means that you can build a lot more units. Um, Market Street is zoned for higher. It's zoned for 25 stories. So you can see, so uh, the projects along Market Street, which are, uh, none of them have received entitlements yet, but are in the process. 1066 Market, 1028 Market, and 950 Market. Those are all gonna be pretty tall buildings because they're on Market Street and they're allowed to build. Did you say 25 stories or 20? I think 25 is the height limit. It could be 20 though. So it would be worth double checking. Um, and all these have the twelve percent. Yes. The good. So you know, people have different. People are of different minds about what's the best thing for affordable housing. So, like I said, you can either build twelve percent on site or you can build twenty percent off site. And some people think it's better to do twenty percent off site because that's higher than twelve percent. But some people think it's better to do 12% on-site because then you're sort of including lower income or moderate income people in the project and it's sort of a mixed income project. I think you should clarify that uh, what, you, what you're saying inclusionary, all you refer to is the ORs, the low market rate of housing. It's not, it's not like a HUD building. It's not like right. a, right. so you're not, you're not getting the low, low income. You're getting right. people that, that you're have middle class. at least 50, 55 yeah. percent. So in San yeah, Francisco, <laughs> it is, and that's part of the problem. It's 55 percent in line? Yeah. So AMI in San Francisco for one person right now is about $72,000. So 55 percent of AMI is about $37,000. So when we're talking about the people who can afford the units created by the inclusionary ordinance, we're not talking about really poor people. We're talking about people who probably have a full-time job. 72,000 is AMI. Is, yeah, for one person. So. What's the maximum income, maximum household income? Maximum household income is 55%. You can do lower, you have to sort of, I mean, you can have people who earn lower, but nobody's gonna do that, right? You could have someone lower and then have someone higher and have an average out. Um, but, you know, and that program is managed through the city. Um, but so when that BMR goes up, it's not always for people with 55%. It may be a different level, isn't it? I'm not sure I understand. So the 12% that goes up on the market, who gets in there? Which AMI? 50, 55%. If it's a rental unit, it's 55% AMI. If it's a purchase condo, yeah, it's 80 to 120% of AMI. And, and you have to understand these these programs are lotteries. Right. So you if you if you fall into the category of the income, um, you can you apply, you apply, you apply, and of course you pay for the fees, and then you have to wait for your name to be pulled. Right. So you might have wasted a bunch of money um, just on uh, fees, application fees. And you uh, still haven't got your name. Called. You apply to each project separately. Yeah, each I think there separately. were 300 in the last lottery that were right. pulled. 300 names were pulled, and there were 20 units. Yeah. yeah, and then you have to. So once your name is pulled, then you still have to go through like an interview process, like you would if you're renting a unit in any way. Yeah, um, yeah. and that program again is managed through the mayor's, the office. mayor's office. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the problem is also that. Inclusionary housing is becoming gentrified because AMI is fluid, it's not fixed. So as more wealthy people move into San Francisco, the AMI goes up. So that means that 55% of AMI is gonna go up. So that means whereas a few years ago, maybe someone earning $30,000 could qualify for these units, now you have to be earning $37,000. So that's unfortunate for those of us who care about housing lower income people. Uh, and that's, you know, is there a there's a conversation about um, should we change that requirement? Um, and I think, you know, uh, myself and other community organizations I've been talking to are thinking about starting to ask developers for a higher percentage of yeah. below market rate units and also thinking about asking for deeper affordability. So 
maybe they do 33% affordable, 11% is affordable to people earning 12% of AMI, 11% is affordable to people earning 30% AMI, and the rest is affordable to people earning 55 or something like that. Um, unfortunately, in 2012, well, fortunately and unfortunately, in 2012 we passed Prop C, which is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And that set aside a lot of money for affordable housing, which is good. But in order to sort of grease the wheels of getting that legislation passed, people had to make a bargain, and that bargain was decreasing the inclusionary requirements, I think from 15 to 12, and also putting it as part of the city's charter. So that means in order to legally change the affordable requirements for more than 12 on a city level, we'd have to do a charter amendment, which is difficult. So the Planning Commission, we've said, hey, Planning Commission, tell tell developers in the Tenderloin they need to be building for people in the Tenderloin. And the Planning Commission is like, that's nice, but our hands are tied. We can't legally ask them to do anything because it's in the city's charter. So that's one of the challenges, I think. So to raise the inclusionary percentage, you'd have to amend the city charter. Yeah. And that requires a two-thirds vote of the population. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people are kicking themselves for making that agreement with the Affordable Trust Fund three years ago. But that's what happened. You can enter into a private agreement. For example, like I was saying with the group housing project, the developer made a private agreement with TNDC that they would provide 12%. The planning commission was like, oh, this makes us feel really uncomfortable. We can't enforce this. Just so you know, the city can't enforce this. And we were like, we get it. It would be enforceable through private right of action as a private contract is. But the city can't intervene and ask anyone to build more than 12% or to ask them to build it at a deeper affordability than 55%. So what's the plan for more housing below the BMI? Uh, affordable housing developers take that over. So the city, a lot of the money that's, so the city has the affordable housing trust fund, Prop C. And the city is hoping to pass Prop A, which is $350 million affordable housing bond um, for affordable housing. That money will be used, some of it, for building housing for people earning less than 55% of AMI. Additionally, developers like TNDC, um, we raise funds through a variety of different ways, um, and we build housing for people earning less than, so a lot of other affordable housing <coughs> developers are in the same boat. So we're not gonna build any housing for low, low income people uh, through the inclusionary program. We're gonna have to do it through other means. So there's still housing being built, it's just at a slow So rate. there's no centralized plan of how much they're gonna increase that Below BMR, that's up to the private. Well, they can't. They can't increase. Sorry, could you? So, um, uh, how can more uh, affordable housing be built that's uh, yeah. for low-income people? That's and is there a, is there a set, is there a plan from the planning commission as to how much they can increase that, or is that just set by that bond? There's um, a lot of different plans. Um, that are coming from different places. There's not a centralized one, okay. but like there's the bond, there's the trust fund, um, there's uh, another thing that's on the ballot is this surplus lands ordinance, which would basically be like the city owns land throughout the city that's underutilized. So either it's empty like a parking lot or it's like a one story building that's not being used. And so this ordinance wants to um, prioritize selling that land to people who are going to build low-income housing on it. I mean, the reason why housing is so expensive in San Francisco is the land cost. That's what makes San Francisco expensive. So that's our, you know, our limited commodity. So there's also other ways, uh, such as a community land trust, uh, and there are other uh, uh, formulas of how to uh, right. lower the rates of uh, the, how much the rent is for some reason. Right. Yeah, so basically you have to take housing off of the speculative housing market in order to keep it affordable. And whether that's through permanent ownership by the members, like the community land trust, or whether that's by permanent ownership by an affordable housing entity, um, that's really the only way to keep housing affordable for in San Francisco for very low or extremely low income people. Um, you know, the mayor will say like he's gonna build 5,000 units of housing or whatever, but he doesn't have a plan. A plan. Well, it, 
he didn't he just release some kind of statement earlier this week or late last yeah. week about he's gonna they're gonna take for instance the Alice Griffith projects they're gonna rehab all of that right right yeah and so you know um, people have mixed feelings about this because like 50 million I think of the two 350 million housing bond is going to be used for rehabbing public housing um, this public housing is a a very large provider of affordable housing for, for very low-income people, but it's been mismanaged by the federal government. Um, and so there's a program in San Francisco um, called the Rental Assistance Demonstration Program, or RAD. And that basically is kind of, it's privatizing of, uh, public housing. Um, different affordable housing nonprofits have bid on the public housing buildings in San Francisco. Now they these they own these buildings or they have stewardship of them and they're gonna pay for huh? They're only managing the managing the Yeah, so they're gonna manage these buildings and rehab them and hopefully do a better job managing them than the federal government has. Um, so there's a lot of the money that would be going towards preservation of existing units instead of necessarily building new so we're, we're coming to almost to the end of time. Do the people want to keep on talking for a while or, or what? Um, uh, let's keep aside our questions. Because we still have more agenda items to do. Uh, that flyer there, uh, so uh, I, I think you guys got this, this flyer. Um, I have monthly meetings about planning issues in the neighborhood that we've had going on since March. Starting next month, we're going to have once a month meetings and once a month trainings about land use and planning issues. So um, if you are interested, and there's also sort of a movement to have a more um, cohesive tenderloin response to a lot of the changes that are happening in the neighborhood hopefully to stem the displacement that's possible because of a lot of these changes. Um, so if you're interested in being involved in that, um, I would encourage you to come to the meeting. Our next one is gonna be next Tuesday at five at the Alexander residence, which is just over there, close by. 2.30 um, Eddie, it's on the flyer. Um, or get in touch with me, my email address and my phone number is also on the flyer. How long are these meetings? An hour, an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. And feel free to spread the word to anyone that you think is interested. Any other uh, questions for the speaker? So we'll kind of move on to the rest of the time. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we're moving on to uh, community announcements. Community announcements. Uh, so there's some that already mentioned on the agenda, and the uh, in the front row had one. Um, you want to mention yours? Okay, oh, sure. So Thanks. Um, okay. My name, okay, I know the hot seat. Okay. My name's Carmen Lee. I'm Program Coordinator for Public Awareness and Education at People with Disabilities Foundation. We're located over at Polk near that defunct McDonald's <laughs> where they're going to be developing. Anyway, um, I'm here to invite you to a free um, workshop that we're having on Tuesday, October 6th from 1 to 4 about reasonable accommodations in housing for people with psychiatric and or developmental disabilities. So we'll be talking about issues like um, service or emotional support dogs, um, cluttering, hoarding, behavioral issues. And um, we have more details on our website. We're going to have um, a UCSF psychiatrist, Dr. Tara Collins, who actually works over at one of the DPH um, buildings. Uh, we have Tom Drohan, who's a tenant attorney at Legal Assistance for the Elderly. We have Michael Rossoff, a landlord attorney. We have Victoria Tedder, who's a housing advocate with the Living <coughs> Resource Center. Um, we have several tenants who are going to be talking about their personal experiences with um, housing issues related to their mental um, disabilities. And um, check the website for details. Um, this is going to be held at the Public Library Correct Auditorium, which seats 235. We're hoping to fill the entire auditorium. And any questions? No. Okay, no. thanks. No, thanks. Um, uh, is there any other announcements? Thank you. Any other announcements?
She was in, in early. I don't know if she was a okay, founding okay, member. She was an early uh, member of NOPAC. <coughs> She's also a chartered member of Central City Democrats, uh, a mother and a resident and a friend. Um, and uh, she'll be uh, sorely missed. Um, also would like to know if there's anybody else, anybody here has uh, any agenda items for the future meetings. If you, uh, my numbers, contact information is on the back of the agenda. And um, um, the next, the last item we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a group picture. Uh, we're uh, giving the our organization's been around 14 years. We have an award that was presented to us. So let's have a group picture over here. Um, and uh, since John <laughs> is media, he can take the picture. Because this is the first time I'm attending the meeting. Well, it doesn't matter. You're, 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 because you're, he's, he's, he's actually media. So. Oh, you're media. Yeah, so I think I remember. Okay. Are you really neutral? <laughs> yeah, you're neutral. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.